Hi, my name is Tim, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to diagnose a faulty potential relay on the heat pump simulator. Now, this is the potential relay right here. It has three active terminals, one, two, and five. Between terminals two and five are a coil that, when energized, will open a set of normally closed contacts between terminals one and two. And these contacts are in series to the start winding as well as the start capacitor. So what this is essentially doing is removing the start capacitor from the circuit once the compressor motor has reached approximately 75 or 80 percent of its rated speed. Now let's begin the service call and we're going to start at the thermostat to make sure it's calling for heating. So at the thermostat click the system selector switch to turn it to the heat position. This will also turn up the temperature setting so it won't be necessary to use these arrows here. Next, we need to refer to the procedure guide at the top of the page. So we're going to click OK once we've completed each step. Our next step is to assess which electrical loads are running. We're going to start at the indoor unit and we're going to take the cover off and we can see that the indoor fan motor is in fact running as evidenced by the spinning arrows. So we're going to click OK and then yes, that the indoor fan is running. Now we go to the outdoor unit and we can see that the outdoor fan is running as evidenced by these spinning blue arrows and it's running continuously. So we're going to click yes. Next, the compressor. Is the compressor running? Well, at first glance, it looks like the compressor is not running. So we're going to say no, but it's possible that the compressor is cycling on its internal overload. Uh, so we're going to open the compressor panel, which we've done, or the control panel. We're going to click OK. And our next step is to measure current of the compressor. And this is going to verify if the compressor is actually running, whether it's off, or whether possibly it's cycling on and off. So we're going to take the jaws of our clamp on ammeter, and we're just going to clip them around the common wire from the compressor. That's this black wire. And we're going to watch the amperage on the meter for just a second. And if we take a look, we can see we've got zero amps, but then it goes to 30 amps for just a brief second and then shuts off again. This is referred to as locked rotor amperage, meaning that compressor is trying to start, uh, is drawing locked rotor amperage, and then with that high amperage is cycling off on its internal overload. Now this most likely indicates a starting circuit problem. And let me show you what I mean by this. We're gonna click on the wiring diagram here for a second. Now when we look at the wiring diagram, here's our compressor right here. Now what would cause this to try to start? Well, what this means is more than likely our run winding is, is engaged, but our start winding is not. So it's possible we have an open start winding, but if you take another look, we've also got those set of contacts that we talked about between terminals one and two are in series to that start winding. In addition, both the run and start capacitor are also in series to the start winding. So a malfunction in any of these starting components could cause the compressor to draw lock rotor amperage and cycle on its overload. Again, we're armed with the compressor motor itself, possibly an open winding, a faulty set of contacts in the potential relay, or one of our capacitors. So I'm gonna store the wiring diagram away. We're gonna click yes in the procedure guide that it drew lock rotor amperage, and we're gonna to need to measure resistance and then capacitance here. So we're gonna to need to turn the power off. So click on the disconnect to turn the power off and click OK. Next, at the control panel, it's going to be necessary to discharge both capacitors. We're going to be working in a fully connected circuit, meaning these capacitors are connected to the potential relay as well as the motor. So simply click on the capacitor and discharge the start capacitor first. And this is a convenient capacitor discharge tool that's on the market. It's very inexpensive. I don't suggest using a screwdriver. That could potentially damage the capacitor. After you've discharged the start capacitor, click OK. And next, we're going to discharge the run capacitor. And again, once the capacitor is discharged, it's safe to work on this circuit now. And remember, the power's off, but the capacitors could potentially hold a charge once the power is de-energized. So once we've discharged the run capacitor, click OK, and we're going to start with the potential relay. Now, it doesn't matter where you start here. You could start by checking the capacitors if you want, but the potential relay seems like the easiest place to start. We need to isolate it, so we're going to click on this wire on terminal 2, and we're just going to disconnect the wire from there so the contacts are isolated. Next, we're going to measure for resistance across the contacts or between terminals 1 and 2. Now, since they're normally closed contacts, we should obtain a reading of 0 ohms. So let's place our leads at the glowing orange hotspots and measure resistance across those isolated contacts. 
And when we do this, we see we have infinite resistance or OL on the meter. This indicates those contacts are open and they're faulty. And this means that the potential relay is at fault uh, and we're gonna need to replace it. So after clicking open or infinite on the procedure guide, simply click on the potential relay and replace it. And once you've replaced it, we're gonna need to turn the power back on and watch one full cycle of operation to make sure everything works properly. I would also pull the indoor air filter just for some added value for the customer. You know, replace it if it's dirty. Next, we need to go up to the space and ensure that heat is being delivered to the space. And as we can see from the graphic on this floor register, we do have heat being delivered to the space. So this finishes our problem. Now, if you want to review any of these steps that we just took, click on this top left icon and you can review each step in this procedure. Good luck on your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Watching videos is great, but nothing beats actually doing. Head over to interplaylearning.com to try these sims for yourself in 3D and virtual reality with a free trial.